Here's example two of finding uh, vertical asymptotes for trig functions in general. So in example one, we did a tangent function, and in example two here, we're gonna do a cotangent function. So example two, find the general equation for the vertical asymptotes of y equals negative cotangent of the quantity 2x minus pi over three, and then plus five. And then after we do that, we're gonna to wanna to find three specific equations of vertical asymptotes, okay? So what we wanna do here is, we're gonna pretty much follow the same process. Uh, there's only gonna, as, as we did in example one, there's only going to be one tiny difference uh, because here we have a cotangent function instead of a tangent function, so only one little thing changes, but the rest is really going to be pretty much the same. Okay, so one little thing changes because we have cotangent, so all the numbers and the formulas are going to change, but the process is literally identical. It's exactly the same. Okay, so the first thing we do, first step of the process is say original, as in the original equation of the vertical asymptotes. Okay, so original. So maybe write that down here. So what that's gonna be is x equals k pi, where k is any integer. Okay, so why is that? Well, that's, um, remember we talked about the cotangent properties in a separate video. So for just the function y equals plain old cotangent of plain old x, Okay, you have uh, x right here and an x right here. Okay, so for cotangent, whatever is inside of the trig function, you set that equal to k pi to find your vertical asymptotes. Okay, so we explained this uh, in a separate video, so we don't want to talk about it again here to take up too much time. Um, but anyway, y equals cotangent of x. Since x is inside of the cotangent function here, it's uh, cotangent is being evaluated at just x, then you set x equal to k pi. Okay, well, we don't have cotangent of x. We have negative cotangent of a big mass plus 5. Okay, well, first of all, the negative changes absolutely nothing. The plus 5 makes absolutely no difference as well. The only thing that matters is that we have a cotangent, and uh, we have to pay attention to what's inside. Okay? So cotangent tells us we have to use k pi. And then what we do is we take the entire expression inside and set it equal to k pi. Just like here, we took the entire expression inside and set it equal to k pi. Okay, so that's the original, and then new. Okay, so the new one is going to be this. Take the entire expression inside of the trig function, 2x minus pi over 3, and set it equal to k pi. Okay, and again, uh, comma, k is any integer, but we're not going to write that again. We want to save some space here. So here, what we did, notice what we did here. Uh, we took this entire expression inside of the trig function, 2x minus pi over 3, Okay, 2x minus pi over 3, and we set it equal to k pi. Okay, so right here, cotangent of x, set the entire expression inside of the trig function equal to k pi, x, x. This big mess here, take the entire expression inside of the trig function, set it equal to k pi, 2x minus pi over 3, 2x minus pi over 3. Okay, so it's the exact same thing here. And remember, it's the exact same thing we did in example 1 with the tangent function, but with the tangent function, we don't use k pi, we use something else, right? because the tangent function has different vertical asymptotes than cotangent. Okay, so remember, cotangent tells us to use k pi, because for cotangent of x, the vertical asymptotes are at x equals k pi, and we explained that in a different video, so we don't want to go through it again here. Anyway, this is the new equation, the new general equation for our new function here. So original cotangent function, uh, untransformed, unstretched, uh, unshifted, things like that. Um, and then this is one, uh, the new general equation for our new function that we were given here. Okay, so after we've done that, now we would just want to solve this equation for x. So let's write it again without the red box around it. So 2x minus pi over 3 equals k pi. Okay, so now we just add pi over 3 to both sides. So 2x equals k pi plus pi over 3. That can't be simplified at all because this has a k in it. So our answer, of course, is going to have a k in it, right? There's nothing we can do. Um, can't get rid of that. Our answer should have a k because it's going to be a general equation for asymptotes, for vertical asymptotes. So it ought to have a k in it because it's general. Okay, so then divide everything by 2. So uh, let's, instead of writing it like that, let's maybe do this. So 2x right here, let's multiply both sides by a half. Okay, so we're going to take this entire side and multiply it by a half. Okay. So let's maybe zoom in on this also. Okay. So this is 1 half times 2x, so the 2's cancel. And then on the left, we're just left with x. And then what happens over here? This is going to be k pi times 1 half plus... Uh, pi over 3 times 1 half. Okay, so distribute the half. So be careful, make sure you, that you actually do multiply everything by the half. Okay, when you divide both sides by 2, make sure that you do that to everything. Okay, so divide both sides by 2, 
uh, everything over here, just the 2x and everything over here. Make sure you get the term with a k also. It's uh, easy to forget that. But if you do it like this, it's sort of, it's a little less easy to forget because just, you know, multiply both sides by a half, cancel over here, multiply this entire thing by a half, and then just make sure you have the parentheses because you're multiplying everything by a half, okay, dividing everything by two. So then you just distribute and then you'll end up with this. And the only thing that we can really simplify maybe is, uh, so let's come up here now. Okay, so this is going to be x equals k pi uh, over two. Okay, k pi over two plus pi over six. Okay, now this is a perfectly acceptable answer, right? k pi over two plus pi over six, that's totally fine. But let's go ahead and get a common denominator because if we do that, it's going to help us find three specific equations uh, for the next part, okay? So if we get a, because if we don't get a common denominator now, we're probably going to kind of have to do it when we get specific equations anyway. So we're just going to save ourselves the trouble of doing it later, uh, over and over. Okay. So uh, anyway, if we want to do that here, so that's going to be x equals uh, k pi over 2. So what's the common denominator here? So 2 and 6, uh, the least common denominator is actually 6. So we're going to multiply this guy by 3 over 3. Okay. And then pi over 6 just stays pi over 6. So this is going to be x equals 3k pi over 6 plus pi over 6. And then common denominator, so we're going to squish it now into 1, so that's why we got the common denominator, so we can do that. So x equals 3k pi and then plus pi all over 6. Okay, okay so that's our answer here. We're, since we're at the end now for that, we're going to say comma k is any integer so that we can be thorough. Okay, so make sure that you do write that if you have to. And even, if you, it, uh, even if you don't have to, it's a good habit to get into so you can be thorough. But anyway, uh, this is the general equation. And there are other forms that we could write this in. So 3k pi plus pi, uh, we can actually factor out a pi and we can maybe even make it a little better than this. But it's, it's really fine. It's not a big deal. We don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, we don't want to get too hung up on what form to write this in. But if we get a common denominator at least, um, then that'll help us out later for finding specific equations. Okay, so anyway, find the general equation for the vertical uh, asymptotes of this function here. That's what we just did. It, and we use the exact same process that we did in example one, just here we're using k pi instead of what we used in example one. Because for cotangents, we use k pi, okay? But again, take the entire expression inside of the trig function, set it equal to k pi, solve for x, and then we get this thing here. So that's our general equation. Now, the other part is to find three specific equations of vertical asymptotes, okay? And then the way we do that, just like in example one, we're gonna set up our little chart here. Okay, so set up our chart. This one's going to be, this column's going to be K, this column's going to be VA for vertical asymptote. So this is vertical asymptote for short, okay? VA, vertical asymptote. Now we only have to find three specific values here instead of, or three specific equations here instead of five. So let's go ahead and choose negative one, zero, and one. Why those values? No real reason in particular. Uh, they'll be relatively simple. So 3k pi plus pi over 6, that whole thing, uh, 3k pi plus pi all over 6. Not really a complicated expression, but it's good to keep the values of k small. Really, we can use any three values of k we want. Okay, so here's our general equation here, blah, 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 where k is any integer. So if we want to find three specific equations, just pick three specific values of k and plug them in here one at a time. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's erase some of this stuff here as we don't really need that anymore. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is just uh, fill in this chart here. So we're gonna use this equation here. So what happens when k is negative one? Okay, then uh, if k is negative one, so this was uh, three k pi plus pi all over six. So if k is negative one, then x equals three times negative one times pi plus pi all over six, okay? So this is uh, three times negative one times pi, that's negative three pi plus pi all over six. Okay, so negative three pi plus one pi, that's negative two pi all over six. So that's gonna uh, simplify to negative pi over three, okay, negative pi over three. Okay, so the first vertical asymptote is x equals negative pi over three. And again, just like we mentioned in example one, make sure that you answer x equals blah, blah, blah. It's not enough to just say negative pi over three because your answer is supposed to be an equation of a vertical asymptote. 
And remember, a vertical asymptote is just a vertical line. It's a special kind of vertical line. So you do have to actually give your answer in the form of an equation of a vertical line. Okay, so be careful. Make sure you say x equals da 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 instead of just da 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 da. Okay? So anyway, what if k is 0? If k is 0, then we have x equals 3 times 0 times pi plus pi all over 6. Okay? Well, 3 times 0 times pi, is that's all just 0. So this whole thing is 0. And then we still have the plus pi. Okay, so 0 plus pi all over 6 is just pi over 6. Okay? So I'm really cramming in the work there. I'm just kind of trying to keep everything in this corner. But anyway, if, when uh, k is 0, x is pi over 6. So this is x equals pi over 6. Okay? And now what if k is 1? Well, if k is 1, let's erase this now. So if k is 1, then we have... Uh, x equals, so 3k pi, so that's going to be 3 times 1 times pi, then plus pi all over 6. Okay. So uh, 3 times 1 times pi, that's just 3 pi. So we have 3 pi, and that's still a plus pi, all divided by 6. So 3 pi plus pi is 4 pi, so this whole thing equals 4 pi all over 6. Pull out a common factor of 2, cancel, it's going to be 2 pi over 3. Okay, so when uh, k is 1, we just found out that x is 2 pi over 3. Okay. So notice, if we didn't get a common denominator here, we would have had to do it for k equals negative 1 and for k equals 1. So in this case, it actually wouldn't have been that bad. Um, but, you know, here we just got a common denominator once instead of having to do it twice. So we did save ourselves a little bit of work. Now for k equals 0, of course, it didn't matter. But still, we save ourselves a little bit of trouble. And if we can do that, it's always nice. So anyway, when k is 1, x is 2 pi over 3. And that's really it for example two. Okay, so here is our general equation here, and then here uh, we had to find three specific equations, and that's what we just did right here. Okay. And we found three specific equations, again, by plugging in three specific values of k. Okay. So really, for the part where you find specific equations, there are really infinitely many possible answers, because k represents any integer, so there's infinitely many values that you could choose. Okay. But we only had to pick three of them, and it's best to keep it simple, uh, as simple as you can, really. So plug in three simple values into here and for k into here, and then we just get uh, these values over here. Okay, so that's it for example two for finding vertical asymptotes for a trig function in general.